Prior to forming the band Filter in the early 90s, Richard Patrick would play guitar in the band Nine Inch Nails. While Trent Reznor would lead the group, Patrick would play on their debut album, appear in their early music videos, and tour with the band over the course of four years from 1989 to 1993. It was after leaving Nine Inch Nails that Patrick would go on to form the band Filter, and the group's first hit song would have a truly disturbing source of inspiration. Today, let's look at the history behind the song Hey Man, Nice Shot. Living in Cleveland in the 80s, Richard Patrick would become a member of the city's music scene, playing in a new wave band called The Act. He would soon have a chance meeting with another local musician named Trent Reznor at a music store who was playing in a new wave pop act called Exotic Birds. Patrick's band would end up opening for Exotic Birds at a gig, and the two musicians struck up a friendship, going to concerts together, seeing groups like Skinny Puppy and Ministry. Patrick would recall that Reznor expressed his desire to start his own band and do his own music telling Spin Magazine. Trent had a collection of songs he was fishing around. He was curious. He tried things. He was like, I think I can rap a little, and so he does on Down In It. He was like, I like Depeche Mode, and he writes Terrible Lie. Reznor would sign a recording contract with TVT Records, who would put out the band's debut record Pretty Hate Machine in 1989. Reznor would ask Patrick to join the band, and the guitarist would contribute to the band's debut record, even if it was minimal, playing the guitar feedback part at the end of the track Sanctified. Patrick would also appear in the Nine Inch Nails videos for Down In It, Head Like a Hole, and Wish. Pretty Hate Machine would set a record, becoming one of the first independently released albums at the time to go platinum, selling in excess of 3 million copies. While Nine Inch Nails was riding high off the success of their debut album and playing the first Lollapalooza in 1991, Patrick would soon realize that there was a great deal of disparity in the band. He would tell Billboard magazine, There was a point in time where Trent just kind of looked at me and I said, Wow, you're going down to New Orleans to live in this beautiful house that you're getting, and I'm going to go back to my mom and dad's house. Patrick would reveal to author John Wiederhorn in his book Louder Than Hell, The Definitive Oral History of Heavy Metal, that he was making about $400 a month playing in Nine Inch Nails. Meanwhile, he would frequently see Reznor destroy tens of thousands of dollars of equipment on tour each night. When Patrick revealed his concerns about not making enough money, Reznor would tell the guitarist, according to the Stop, Drop, and Talk podcast, Hey listen Rich, I know you need some extra cash. Listen, down at the end of the street there's a little pizzeria and they need drivers, so maybe you can go make some extra cash over there. And I'm like, wow. At the same time, Reznor would urge Patrick to write his own record to get out of his awful financial situation and not solely rely on Nine Inch Nails. Patrick would take that advice to heart and started to record his own music. According to the book Louder Than Hell, it was during Patrick's final days in Nine Inch Nails in 1993 that the guitarist would present the song Hey Man Nice Shot to Reznor. The song had been written two years prior, and when he originally presented it to Reznor, he took a liking to the song and wanted to work on it. However, one day later, Patrick would receive a call from Reznor's manager, who told him that he had to relinquish all the publishing rights to the song, but he would still be credited on the track. Patrick wisely declined the offer and kept the song for himself, and it was at that moment that it appeared to be the final straw for the musician who decided to finally quit Nine Inch Nails. He would reveal to Wiederhorn the importance of the song in his life, saying, That song has literally paid my mortgage, paid for my life the past 15 years. Patrick would record a four-song demo in his seedy apartment in Hollywood that included Hey Man, Nice Shot, and soon sent the tape to different labels. It would be Mo Austin's son, Mike Austin, who was the A&R man for Atlantic owned Reprise Records, who would sign the musician. Patrick would tell Billboard, when he signed me, he came over to my seedy Hollywood apartment in Beverly Hills, sees I have this 8-track and all this stuff, three woofers I'd stolen from my dad, and these realistic speakers, and my cat had nibbled on the cone of one of the speakers. He said, you did your demo with this gear? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, I want to sign you right now. I'm not even going to wait. I know you're fielding other offers. Working with former Nine Inch Nails programmer Brian Leesgang, the duo would retreat back to Ohio and set up shop in a three-story house in the Cleveland suburb named Rocky River. At Lollapalooza in 1994, 10,000 four-song sampler cassettes, which were basically the band's demo, were given to attendees. The label received 300 feedback forms that were included in the sampler cassettes, according to Billboard magazine. In the late part of 1994, Patrick was holed up in Canton, Michigan, going over the final mixes for the band's debut album, Short Bus. Patrick had started to question whether he had made the right decision to leave Nine Inch Nails, but at the same time he didn't want to ride Reznor's coattails, specifically telling his label not to market him as the former guitarist from Nine Inch Nails. 
Those doubts, however, would be put to rest pretty quickly. Unbeknownst to Patrick at the time was that as he was working on the final mixes, one of the album's unreleased tracks was already hitting rock radio across the country. That unreleased track would be Hey Man Nice Shot, which was set to appear on the soundtrack for the Billy Zane movie Tales from the Crypt Presents Demon Knight, which was set to come out in January of 95. The song would become Short Bus's lead single and one of Filter's best known tracks. It would turn out that one of the radio promo reps working at Filter's label had shared the song with different stations around the country, and it would be a DJ in Colorado Springs who played the song at 2 in the morning. The track received a huge response and was soon starting to be played all across America. In fact, in the early weeks of Hey Man Nice Shot getting airplay across the country, some radio stations were getting asked by listeners if it was a Nine Inch Nails track, according to Billboard magazine. Hey Man Nice Shot would peak at number 10 on the alternative rock charts, number 76 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, and Short Bus would go on to be certified platinum, peaking at number 59 on the Billboard album charts. The song was written around 1991, but due to the timing of when the public first heard it in early 95, some believed it was written about the death of Nirvana frontman Kurt Cobain. In fact, many DJs in Seattle pushed this idea, but in reality the song had nothing to do with Cobain. But the idea that some people felt the band was profiting off of Cobain's death bugged Patrick for years after Short Bus came out, with the frontman telling Billboard, I eventually talked to Dave Grohl and Chris Novoselic about it, and I assured them it wasn't about Kurt. I told them I wasn't trying to profit off of anyone's death, and that there was a phenomenon known as and people do it, and that I want to kind of understand it and raise the intellectual question of, you know, to be or not to be in that whole thing. When Dave and Chris understood that, and I could look them both in the eye, that's when I felt completely okay about it. So you may be wondering, what's the song about? The song would take its inspiration from a Pennsylvania politician, State Treasurer R. Bud Dwyer. Dwyer had been convicted of bribery charges in December of 1986 and was awaiting his sentencing. Dwyer could have faced a maximum prison sentence of 55 years after a court found him guilty of accepting a $300,000 bribe and awarding a $4.6 million state contract to a data processing firm. One day before his sentence was to be handed down, on January 22, 1987, he called a press conference where he proclaimed his innocence, and when people thought he would announce his resignation, he unexpectedly pulled out a gun out of a manila envelope and shot and killed himself in front of reporters. No one else would be injured. And while Patrick remembered hearing the news reports about the death when it happened in 1987, it would be during his time with Nine Inch Nails, while on the road as part of Lollapalooza, that it resurfaced for him, with the frontman telling Billboard, On one stop, there was this little booth that was selling books, and they gave me this weird videotape. I still have it. That wasn't Faces of Death, but it had footage from that press conference. In 1995, the LA Times would report that Dwyer's widow, Joanne, was angry about the song and worried about the effect it would have on her children and grandchildren. The family had planned to protest the song with Filter's label, Reprise Records, and while Dwyer isn't named specifically in the song, Patrick and Lee Skang would be forced to issue a statement at the time saying, and I quote, The song is not a celebration or glorification of taking one's own life. The phrase, hey man, nice shot, is not a reference to the final act itself, but rather an expression of guts and determination of a person standing up for what they believe is right. We are extremely sensitive and respectful to the family and friends of Mr. Dwyer. MTV, however, would review the liner notes of the band's debut album and notice that Patrick's publishing company was called Buddy Dwyer Publishing, with Dwyer spelled D-O-I-W-E-R. It was at Dwyer's funeral that he was eulogized as an innocent man, with the politician having many defenders. There were basically two portraits of Dwyer, according to the Associated Press at the time, who wrote, and I quote, One picture painted by the FBI, the U.S. Justice Department, and government witnesses was a man driven by greed, eager to railroad the award of a $4.6 million no-bid contract to a small California data processing firm that promised him a $300,000 kickback. The other, from Dwyer's perspective, was of an honest, innocent public official who was persecuted, not prosecuted, by the government he once proudly lectured about to high school students in his Problems of Democracy classes. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe. We'll see you again in Rock and Roll True Stories. Take care.